to Genesis, civilization began in Mesopotamia, meaning the land between the rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates in southern Iraq. In the same way, American history began with colonization on our east coast along the James, Hudson, and Potomac rivers. But it shifted westward with the Louisiana Purchase, and from that day forward, everything in America has focused on the Mississippi. It is the American Nile, and the Delta is the most trusted name in blues. She gave us Robert Johnson, Jimmy Rogers, and B.B. King. She gave us muddy waters and then sent him back upstream. She took him to Chicago where the south side spread the news and she tells it just like it is, the most trusted name in blues. If it comes from the Delta, then you know that it's real cause it's down and it's dirty like them old cotton fields. Every word full of sorrow and every word gospel truth. They call her Mississippi, the most trusted name in blues. She gave us Elvis Presley, Conway Twitty, and Charlie Pride. She gave them something soulful that says black as it is white. She's the pride of Tupelo and the sound that made front page news. And it's just the cold, hard fact. The most trusted name in blues. Of all the blues artists who came across the South, one of the most unique was Sam Hopkins, better known as Lightning. Lightning in influenced one of my most admired songwriters, Texas Towns Van Zandt. Towns used to follow Lightning around Houston and tried to walk in his footsteps. If you've ever seen a picture of old Lightning, he always had a cigarette unlit hanging from his lip and a pint of gin in his hip pocket. That's who Towns Van Zandt aspired to be, just like old Lightning. Some say that's why Towns was haunted by demons. But I think the demons began when he had a total nervous breakdown in college. A doctor in Galveston declared him mentally insane, gave him so many shock treatments that when his mother came to visit him in the hospital, he did not know her name or who she was. And at some point, Towns was seen walking in the yard, pulling up flowers, eating them, and talking to a tree. He wished for a box of knives to fall from the heavens and sever both arms so he would no longer have to play a guitar and write songs such as Pancho and Lefty. He even named his sailboat the Vincent in honor of the tormented artist Van Gogh. Towns Van Zandt said, I perceive that there is heaven, purgatory, hell, and the blues. And like Lightning Hopkins, my hero, I've spent my life in the blues just reaching up for a piece of hell. The Delta is known for its demons. Some people like Towns get their ticket punched at birth and they are destined to ride the crazy train. Hanging on to every word that came pouring from his lips, he said each day's a mystery and that's why life's called a trip. Listening to this old wine bottle beats a needle in my arm. The blues is my bread and butter. And this guitar is my bad luck charm. 
The crazy train that I ride hauls away all my cares. Like a lost ball in the tall weeds, I'm here, there, and nowhere. But as long as they're moving, these wheels help keep me sane. I'm a long way from Mississippi, but at home on the crazy train. He told me that graveyard love is like any addiction. He said sometimes you find the heat just ain't worth the friction. So I guess me and Memphis will never get along. She was born to look good in blue, but I was born to sing these songs and ride this crazy train. The Delta may have its demons, but in her music we find our deliverance. All my life in a search for my own deliverance, I have been torn between two men. My preacher grandfather and his son-in-law who married my mother's sister. Reverend W.J.H. Sasser was a simple man but a complicated human being. His mother died at birth, and he spent his whole life starved for attention, so he became an authoritarian Baptist preacher. His son-in-law, Edward Earl Rogers, moved into his house to help care for his wife, who was bedridden with dementia and rheumatoid arthritis. Those two men spent their lives in conflict with each other, and I spent my life torn between the two of them. My Uncle Earl had the first television I ever saw. And on Friday nights, I would watch westerns with him, and on Saturday, the game of the week. He played guitar, and he introduced me to Hillbilly Blues. But at church, I would hear my grandfather thunder from the pulpit, Television is of the devil. I surmised because Uncle Earl played guitar and listened to Hank Sr. that before I was born, my grandfather had railed against the devil's radio. Grandpa saw it as evil, didn't want it in his house. The magic of the airwaves that came drifting across the sound. But Sister Mahalia Jackson mixed gospel with lots of soul, singing Grandma the Jesus on the Devil's Radio, a tower of power clear channel eight at night. That's where I heard Hank Williams, and that's where I saw the light. In that little transistor that I hid under my pillow, I kept right on listening to the Devil's Radio. Elvis got hot in Memphis and couldn't stop those screaming girls. The magic of Sun Records soon spread around the world. Then Brother J.D. Sumner mixed gospel with rock and roll, singing Grandma to Jesus on the Devil's Radio. Thank you. Let's just take a second and give one more round of applause for Billy Henderson. Billy, that was really beautiful. Do you all enjoy that? So, you know, a lot of people don't 